blessed to be here with one of the flyers who I'm actually wearing some of his magic work, interviewing you, brother, because I think you should win. And I've been a fan since the moment I first saw your work. Um, I want to thank my creative director, Whipper Wiley, for really pushing your work in front of me because I, I immediately fell in love with what you do. So thank you for being here, man. And congrats. Absolutely. Thank you so much for, you know, for all of your, you know, kind words and just your graciousness, you know, I'm absolutely words as well. Thank you again just for, you know, doing this. And yeah, I'll, I'll let you start with your questions. <laughs> <laughs> so my, let me say this. Yeah, this, this fit right here, the texture, the colors, and then people can't see, but you know, you know, I always got the fresh uh, wide leg uh, pant and trouser to go with it. What, how did you get to a point where you had like a certain style that was really signature to you? Because when I see your work, it's always very apparent that it's you. I can spot your collections out in any lineup. Um, was it always this way? Did you always have a certain affinity to, like, for example, a lot of your trousers are just like swooping and huge draping, um, wide leg pants. Did you always have that kind of flair to you or was this an evolution of, of a style? You know, I just sort of entered into the fashion landscape wanting to create menswear that allowed men to really participate in the practice and the ritual of fashion and getting dressed up. And so like one of the things that I always cite is like my sort of um, experience when I would watch, you know, red carpet shows and things and, and they would go on and on about, you know, what the women were wearing and this and that. And, and it was all beautiful. And then they would get to, you know, the men's portion and it, would just, it would, for me, it didn't feel authentic. It felt very forced. It felt like mm -hmm. the guys were traditionally wearing pretty much the same thing. And if, you know, one guy wore like, um, you know, navy blue instead of black that year, then he was like, all oh, the fashion rage. And so <laughs> I just wanted to really sort of use my craft and use my sort of ideals um, to really create things that made or that allowed men to emote the same way that women are allowed to emote as it relates to the way that they dress, right? And so yes. uh, the, the silhouettes just kind of like came organically, you know? I feel like as, as an emerging brand, I'm still very much allowed in this space to experiment and to do these things. And so, yeah, I mean, that, that sort of silhouette with the trouser and um, the, the Dorcas tunic that we also have that just kind of came to me as a sort of um as a, i wanted that to be a staple so i wanted to start from there if that makes sense where were you when you found out that you were nominated for a cfda award i was in bed like i literally woke up one morning and then you know i saw all these sort of like notifications on my phone and then in my head, in my just waking up sleepy state, I read or I kind of matched, matched a sentence together that said Kenneth Nicholson Designer of the Year. And I was like, okay, what is this? Because you know, nowadays, like everybody can send you anything. And so I was like, okay, yeah, let me right. investigate a little bit. So I went to the best source possible, Instagram. And, then, and so, you know, I started seeing like all these things and I was like, oh, wow, this is amazing. So. Yeah, I was just completely floored. I mean, being nominated is like, it is truly a dream come true. Like that's something that I've been, that's been in my heart, like forever since I was a teen. And, um, when different people started talking about you to me, they were like, this guy, he's he's the next one. That's, this are you clear? That's like your rep, like he's next up. And and I was like, I, I felt cool because, you know, you always want to be on the next step. So I was like, oh, yeah. All right, put me, let me know. Let me know. Let me see. Let me put it on. So thank, thank you again, man. And I'm, I'm happy. What, is, what does being nominated mean to you? Like, 
how how I know how it feels to be nominated, but what does it mean for you coming from where you come from, coming with a as I can imagine you as like a little child with a dream. What does it mean now to, to actually be a fun? Gosh, I mean, again, you know, my words have been like failing me for the last month. But, you know, it's so, it's a lot. Like, it's a lot to unpack. So, you know, like I, I'm coming from Houston, Texas, right? So it's the South. So there's all of these things with growing up, you know, in a particular class black in a particular yeah. community, you know, like it's, it's a lot. And so, you know, when I think about it, I've had, you know, just a myriad of people in my life tell me that I couldn't do it or I shouldn't do it or there was no space for me um, or there was no uh, representation of me at the time, no one to model myself up like after. Mm. And so, it's just been really crazy because, you know, like you said, it's like a child. Like people ask me, like, you know, you know, you wanted to be a fashion designer. It really did not take that much intellectual capacity for me to pursue it. I was just doing mm. it, right? So, you know, I had something deposited into my heart, which was to create beauty, artists, and fashion design. And that was the thing that I, that I chose to do because that, felt most natural and organic to me. Not to mention right. that we grow up with people telling us, you know, school systems, you know, um, it's, just, it's just sort of like a common slogan, like you can do what you want to be. And I took that quite right. well. And so, right, right. You believed it. I believed it and I, and I went for it. And so, um, you know, and so like now on the other side of just, you know, cause I'm still very much like navigating, right? But to be at this point, you know, being honored by peers. I mean, I remember going to the Galleria when I was a kid in Houston, Texas. That was one of the places where you could experience fashion design. I remember going to the Gucci Suzuki. You know, at the time, Tom Ford was the designer for Gucci. Right. Going to that boutique and just studying, like, the finishes on the garments, looking at the hemlines, looking at the button placement, looking at just how it was constructed. And now to be recognized by the CFDA and then you look at other categories and you see some of the people that I grew up watching. I mean, it is surreal. It is surreal. It's, it's, um, it's, it's divine. It really is. Divine. Yeah. I think that the timing is divine for you because I want to talk a little bit about your aesthetic and, and what, what makes up the brand, what makes up your collection, how you create the art, what your actual inspiration is. The reason I say it's divine timing because what I see in a lot of your work um, is a nod to some of the silhouettes of previous eras before you and I were even born. And the, I love, like, the, there's a, a funk element that's really liberating. Um, there's an androgynous element that's, that's really liberating for menswear. And, and especially, and we talked about this earlier before the call, but like, you know, I love these flare, like if people can really see it, you know what I mean, I can model this. This is flare, look at that. This right here, like, I love that. I'm in love with it, actually. And I wanna know, like, how did you get there? How did you get to a point where you have a clear signature look, which is obviously why you're nominated, and it was built on, I'm sure, a, a different styles, but was it what was it about the 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 flare pants, the um, the sleeveless vest that you you wear? Were you thinking like, oh, I'm gonna draw on these errors? How did you end up with this look and well, this aesthetic? I am influenced by a lot of things like different culture. You know, you know, I'm a traveler. You know, I I just I like I like different things, and so. When I went, you know, started designing and, and just really thinking about the long-term vision and where I wanted, and I guess the path that I wanted, to, the trajectory that I wanted to be on, you know, as it relates to offering men clothing, 
It was mm -hmm. one that was that was forward thinking. And yep. so the Dorcas Tunic, which is this piece that we have, um, it's like for our brand, it's traditionally made out of linen and you know, it has to like it. And, and it's a rare. And then like, you know, you said the pants, the flare, like that, I wanted that to be a starting point. So I felt like that was a really good compromise to make something that felt familiar to men's wear, but not completely jolting them into a new conversation right off the bat. I feel like that's an experience and that's a journey that I want to have mm -hmm. with my client. So when we, so, so it was more of a strategic idea to enter into, you know, um, my particular uh, space of design with offering something that felt like an invitation. So it had to be somewhat familiar, but then there was also promise behind it that, you know, let's grow together, let's continue to explore these methods. I love it. You, you touched on something. Even if you can be inspired by different cultures or different eras, I think a lot of some designers I see that they, they just re redo what's already been done. What I felt about your work was I felt the travel in it. I felt the funk in it. I felt the freedom. I also um, I feel like some of the silhouettes are literally both ancient and future. Meaning, like the the I met the one that I, the fit that I wore for uh, New York Fashion Week last year. Um, my, one of my favorite pieces, and it, and it reads as some as denim. The the pants are so wide that the silhouette. Some people thought I was wearing a long dress or a skirt, right? And what's so interesting about that is, in all around the world, in every single corner of the world, men wore some form of a skirt, right? And what and what's cool about it though is that. It's both skirt and trouser at the same time. It's both ancient in that pre this like men have to wear pants all the time a world that we live in you know now, which is obviously changing. Um, and then also it felt like I felt futuristic in it. you know so I, I, how did you how do you when you're actually designing, how are you combining these elements? Well like what goes through your mind? Is it is it an intuitive process or is it really methodical? You know, I feel like it probably is more um, just natural. I mean, more, probably more intuitive. It's just, it's just something that just sort of flows, you know, out. And so I am very deliberate about um, making sure that I am continuing to plot the course for forward thinking and menswear. Yeah. At the same time, you know, I feel like there are there's so much in history and in um, certain techniques and things like you know garment making, or pattern making, and draping. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we, you know, as an artist that's sort of like taking up in mantle in this particular genre, I want to be connected to that. So I don't. So it's not necessarily about doing this work and then like not acknowledging the history you know that i get to grow from and evolve mm -hmm. from. and so i just feel like that's something that's embedded, like, that's embedded in me and embedded in the core of the work that, that we're producing so big tenant is quality so whether it's you know something that's very experimental or mm -hmm. something that's more um i guess uh familiar quality is like a sort of of the brand. So like nearly everything is like finished with bias on the inside or some sort of like nice pocket lining. It's a very technical and artistic yeah. process. I think it was an important point. We really, were talking before the call about menswear and the red carpet or certain shows where you would see um, the women's wear section and then the menswear and there was a stark difference between the two. <laughs> can, 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 you, can you tell me again and tell everybody what, what that experience was for you and how that inspired you to be a fashion designer in the first place? Well, yeah, I mean, we approach these award ceremonies like the people we are. So, like, if you're going to do, I mean, like, you have to think about it. I mean, like, you know, you're being honored for music, you're being honored for some, some artistic feat, right? And so, 
in a way, you know, they're, they're, they're celebrating excellence. So you want to see that sort of mirrored in every, fa in every facet. And so like yeah. that starts at the red carpet. And so, you know, it would be amazing. They would go on and on about what the women were wearing and the year, and it was just amazing. You know? And then they would, you know, do the men's segment and it would just feel very forced. It felt like they were having to say things, you know? So yeah. um, when in reality, we all knew that they basically looked the same, you know? And if anyone yeah. was like maybe blue, then it was like, oh, he's such a, like, oh, he's such a like, oh, he's this guy. And I'm just, you know, I just looked in like a fashion history book and there was velvet and there was lace and there was, you know, stocking. There was, you know, they really brought yeah. it. Here we are, you know, and at the time, maybe, I don't know, here we are in 2008, and we're applauding people for like, baby blue on the, on the red carpets. Like, where did we go? Like, what turn <laughs> did we make? And so, like, with another thing with the line is definitely sort of taking empirical evidence, because I think now um, a lot of uh, forward-thinking men's where it, there's still some segments, you know, that push back, you know, um, there's still some reviews that, that haven't evolved. And so mm -hmm. um, I just want to say it's empirical. This is empirical data. Like men actually did wear this. The color pink was actually made for, I think it was royalty, but it was actually made for yeah. hell. And so I just really don't adhere to these notions, you know? Yep. So when I'm designing, it's really like, it's all on the table. Everything's allowed. And then how I filter that into, you know, the brand aesthetic and, and, and the vision. Um, I just want to continue to do that in a very thoughtful, balanced way. Because it's me. What, it's what do you think? Really oh, sorry, man. You know? Yeah. I, what do you, when, for somebody who doesn't know your brand, what, what do you think they see when they see you know, somebody like self sporting, um, Kenneth Nicholson. What do you think what do you think like the first like feelings they have or, or what do you want them to feel? One one of my biggest things that I want people to feel is edified and lifted. You know, so mm. I want people to feel good when they put these clothes on. You know, because if you feel yeah. like you present yourself certain way in public space you know you might walk a little taller you might hold your head a little higher you speak mm -hmm. and so that's one of the things that i definitely want to do is lift it um you know and then it's just i think when people look at the work i think because there's there's not really there isn't a wide conversation like i don't i don't feel necessarily like my brand fits me in the box at the moment, you know? Because I just feel like, one, we're an emerging brand from you to the scene. Uh, and two, I just feel like we're charting our own course. So I would just want people to see beauty. I would want mm. to know that it's, it, it's an invitation to be liberated. I think um, there are a lot of people that maybe right now don't know how to take it because they're, we're just so confined. You know, as a society, yeah. you know, and so like their reference is very shallow. They see somebody yep. in a lace shirt and they think it's misplaced, and it's like, mm -hmm. ah, okay, well, it's not. Yeah, I love the idea of you wanting them to just see the person that's in them, liberated. Like that, that that's like the highest. Uh, it's not even a compliment. I think it's that that's the highest uh, form of design when somebody puts on something and they literally embody it. Because what is the body but a vessel that, that we, we're in, our spirit is walking in? When you put on another garment or something on your body, it then becomes your body if it's right, if it fits. And so that once now you're in a new body and that body should literally represent who you are at your core. And I, you know, that's why I like, I, I that's why I'm a fan because the, the album, especially that I'm working on now, we just did a whole shoot. And I think 
I don't even know if I wore much of anybody else for the last shoot because I felt like the album I'm working on literally is about the liberation of masculinity, the shapes of, of man, the different emotions, the different feelings, the different sides. And, and what I got in wearing your work was that liberation, sometimes regal, sometimes like funky and hippie, um, and other times it was just like a certain power that I felt and grace um, as I walked into rooms or walked outside and outdoors. So you're doing it. Like what you want, I'm just telling you, as, as somebody who is 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 constantly in your garments, you have uh, definitely created liberation menswear. Um, so thank you for doing that. Um, I wanted to, to know for you, I know that I've worn your work who are some other people you either design for um, or who have sported your collection or people that you really want to wear and like you maybe imagine them in? Um, I would definitely like to see, um, you know, my clothing, just a variety of personalities and types. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Is there any like one? I mean, as, a, as just like a giver, like someone that just likes to give gifts and like, make beauty i i would want to see my clothing on everyone <laughs> like you know Brad Pitt, uh, Lupita Nyong'o. i mean like you name it like yeah. and that's the thing like i don't really feel like the brand is i think it's more about wanting to experience beauty so if the client wants to experience mm -hmm. a certain type of beauty then yes i would love to see them in that. <laughs> That's fire, bro. Yeah, I mean, I can see a lot of people. I mean, I, what I hope is as I'm wearing more and more um, collections from you, I, I keep getting men, women, um, and everybody in between wanting to wear what I got on. So, like, that's always a good sign. But I'm also, like, territorial over it. I'm like, no, nah, you're not. Yeah. You're not going to wear what I got on right now, but you can go hit up Kenneth. And get some yourself. How, how? And I'm wondering, like, as we're talking about different people wearing your work, how has this COVID time, this pandemic season, affected your ability to move as a designer? Um, do you still, you know, send, um, like you said, your gift? One of your love languages, it sounds like, is, is giving gifts and giving your work. Have you been able to give to, to people to wear our people, or is it a, a design time? Like, let me hunker down, incubate. How has it shaped your business model right now? Yeah, I think um, the initial shock, probably just like the rest of the world, was a really huge impact. Um, yeah, and then I, you know, I do feel like that sort of evolved for me into a time to just commit to this space in this time that we're in. I, I feel like for me, like just spiritually and just like in my core, a part of growth comes from submission, right? Because like I have different times where I've entered se into seasons of my life where I would have much preferred to be somewhere else doing something with someone else or whatever the case may be. But it was in that submission of the moment that I actually that actually stretched me and grew me. Mm. And allow me to sort of step into the next phase of my life stronger and better. So I felt like the COVID thing sort of was an invitation for me to slow down um, and really mm -hmm. be more intimate with my creative process and you know, just allow me to really rethink or at least recalibrate um, the ways in which I was putting out a narrative in terms of like a collection, you know, like a whole collection story or, you know, design for me. Like how, how, so, how, have you, how have you changed your view on what like a, a collection is or the narrative for like a rollout? Well, you know, um, I feel like pre-COVID, there was this idea, this idea, you know, the seasons, you gotta produce, you gotta produce, you gotta work you know, get this out, get this out. It's this sort of 
notion that you, you got to be on this wheel, you know? Mm-hmm. And I'm all yeah. work. Like, I will work, like, day for days on end to achieve something. Just That's the dedication that I have. Um, yeah. This was a specific sort of, like, time for me to um, allow, allow the work that I was putting out to marinate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Marination. Marination. Yeah. You know, moving forward, have a conversation with myself and say, hey, did you tell that story in the breadth of the way that you imagined it? Is there is it worth investigating? You know, so when I put out Grandma's Couch, which was the last collection, or from Grandma's Couch, which was the last collection, um, that comes from like, you know, a history tradition of just being around, you know, my grandma's house and maybe a Sunday dinner or every like these festivities that sort of take place in that space. And that is very mm. like rich, rich history. That's easy. That's easily that could be easily applied to like three, four, five collections. How do you imagine next year? Actually really the rest of the year and the next year's fashion weeks. Like what do you think that's going to look like going into 2021? Like, I know we're, we're in the music industry, they told us in, like, I want to say end of March, definitely early April, that touring was done all year. Like, I knew it was going to be pretty much done, like, this year, but I never thought it would go all the way there. And we'll see what happens. What, how do you feel like Fashion Week is going to look like? Uh, for the rest of the year and then and then next year? Well, um, and I think the fashion world is a very creative space. So the ways in which they sort of navigate and just do work from day to day can consist of like creativity and like making things work. So I feel like yeah. a lot of the virtual showing that it's going on right now has been a remarkable um, success and it's been remarkably interesting to be that strong pivot into that space. Um, I think, you know, for me going forward, I'm, I'm actually working on a short film um, that'll be oh, nice. yeah, that'll be shown next month um, for fashion. Um, and, and, you know, I think it's an opportunity because I love to write. I love to, you know, do other things and so for me, just like, just being the opposite it's like yes, yeah, you know, it's allowing to be stretched in the waves and maybe um, engage my my writing, you know, and engage. Yeah. Myself, you know, so I love it. I'm, I just feel optimistic. I feel like with every sort of like unexpected twist or turn, there's always an answer. It's just how we engage. You know. You, you gave me a few ideas. I'm, I'm not going to say it in this interview. We'll, we'll talk offline, but I think I got some ideas for you <laughs> because I, I don't want anybody to know. I want it to be yours. <laughs> Um, it, but it's interesting what you're saying about leaning on other crafts that you may have. So I love the idea, and I love our generation's multi-hyphenate uh, personalities. You know what I'm saying? We all do multiple things. So I think that's dope. You're right. COVID, uh, COVID brought me back to music production. Um, I've, I've started, you know, a little, little, little craft signature cocktail, you know, different, like, little dabbling little things, but, like, each little, um, or each art that you learn completely influences your main craft, right? So, like, me looking at cocktails and, and how to get certain aftertaste and certain uh, bite that I, I want in the cocktail, I then, when I go to music, I'll t- tinker certain, tweak certain sounds to get, like, a bite in your ear. Or like to have this kind of tail on the voice, so it trails, 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 trails off. And so I love how art influences each other. Um, is there another? Is there another form of art that you love the most that influences your design and fashion? Like, is it TV, films, or books? Is it um, some something that I don't even know? Um. I love, you know, I love that as a, you know, way to just express, uh, you know, emotion, uh, human nature. I think that's a great, mm-hmm. uh, I love, 
I mean, I like I like reading, so I like consuming books or, or even deep dives or, or, or articles. Um, one of the things um, that I feel inspired me probably really heavily outside of design would probably be music, actually. And that's because mm. there's a writing component, but then there's also, for me, music is like very, very emotive. And so like when yeah. I just sit with a particular artist, listen to that project like over and over and over, I really do find myself getting into that space. And I, it, it's almost like I can channel that emotion into new work or into a uh, design or, or painting, whatever I'm doing at the time. Um, so I, I think it's like very, very powerful. And ironically enough, when I moved to Los Angeles in 2016, I found myself just organically meeting all of these musicians. It was like, it was like, you know, God was trying to tell me something, you know, because they would just like, you know, they would just come like um, a really good uh, friend of mine who has been an amazing supporter. And just as an example, we, we just, I was just walking one day outside of um, Earth Cafe or, or some something around mm -hmm. there. And he just literally came up behind me and tapped me on the shoulder and we started talking. Moments like that really do inspire me, you know, because it's not, yeah. it, it just, moments like that, and I don't mean to trail off, <laughs> but it just really makes me feel like, you know, this, this world, this space, my life, it's just, yeah. it's protected, I'm watched over, it's orchestrated, everything gonna be all right. Yeah. It makes me feel, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. No, it, 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 it makes you see the web of the world off the internet yeah so when those moments happen you're like oh this is a moment because so much of our life is like mundane day-to-day -day stuff so it's so nice when the universe god life hits us with these moments and we can like bet on them like okay cool this was this is real i need to work with this person or this um or i need to do this thing this action um i feel that like a thousand percent i've had a lot of those actually and COVID. The, feeling like the awareness because I feel like in this time yeah. it's easy to get distracted so I feel like it's such a value to even be aware of that and not just yes. like taking it like oh I met this person oh this happened oh blah blah blah, blah. but actually just being aware that there is like a, a panoramic connection you know of things happening and I find just a lot of inspiration in, in that as well. Yeah. So two th two questions, actually, based on that. Um, one is a side note. Have you ever worked with a music artist before the album is done? Maybe in the st in your studio, just like having a link or access to an album and then design while that musician is designing, also designing your collection. Okay, so I, I've, I've had the opportunity to listen, to like, you know, sit in on recordings before and listen to, um, you know, takes and, and just sort of like be around the process. Yeah. So I think that would be, I mean, for me, I think that would be ideal because yeah. you're both kind of like sitting in that same energy. And so yeah. Really consistent. But yeah, I mean, I, I, I um, yeah, I've gotten to hear like, you know, pre-release music like yeah uh, yeah I, I, that's just a side note we, we should touch base on that that might be a thing second you were talking about awareness um in really we were just talking about waking you up in the middle of of, of your mundane life but the globe has also faced awareness obviously about health our country has faced specific awareness about really non-black people realizing what black people have been going through. Is it at all, or is it just, have you just been like, focused just on, on art itself? So even like, again, like free is sort of the situation that we find ourselves in. I was always inspired by my history, you know, being a black American, because that's, that's what I grew up with. And I can see clearly like, 
you know, it, we, we've been going through like a psychological warfare for some time now. And I think it is, yeah. you know, high time um, that people start really taking notice of that. Cornell West, Dr. Cornell West. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, you know, and he always cites like a rich tradition that, you know, black Americans come from. And so like that's sort of, that's sort of like how I sort of move through my life is knowing that I'm drawing from ancestral strength, like yeah. strength and I'm moving forward. And so resist any temptation to sort of pigeonhole me because that's inaccurate. And so it's just sort of like navigating um, that. Yeah. I love that because I, I think that our, our art or our products or our services, they're created for humanity. Right. We just happen to come from a certain heritage. It doesn't mean because we put it on or we do, you know, whatever the service is or we give this product that we only want black people to be in it or to experience it. And we don't only want black dollars. Like on, on, a, on the business level, we welcome money from all <laughs> anybody, right? So it, I, I do, I, I love that. Um, I feel that way in a lot of the things I do. And I want to see that for everything. Like even schools that are historically black, down the line, my hope for HBCUs is that more people from all over the world, from China, from different countries in Europe, from South America, want to attend an HBCU just because it's a dope ass school, right? You know, so like rather than being like, oh, I can't send my kid there because it's for black people only. Right. And no, no one does that for the top European or American institutes. I'm not gonna be like, I'm not gonna go to Oxford because that's for white people, you know what I'm saying? So I love that, I love that. Um, and, it, and, it, and it brings me to the last and, and definitely not least, but to me the most important question. And this is the way I'm gonna frame it. Um, somebody told me once that the mark of greatness is that anybody who came before you was not doing what you did. And when you came into the game, everybody after you was influenced by what you did. Um, and that's what makes somebody excellent or great or have a great impact. What do you want your mark on the fashion world to be? When, when it's all said and done, when, you know, God willing, inshallah, you're an old man sitting on a porch um, in some uh, island somewhere or wherever you want to live, and, you know, Mars, when you're looking back at your life and your contributions, what do you want people to say, look, Kenneth Nicholson brought this to the game. This was his signature mark on the fashion world. God, oh, wow, that's a really, like, hefty question. <laughs> <laughs> Kenneth Nicholson, wow. Um, I would probably want them to say, uh, yeah, Kenneth N Nicholson, wow, like, helped. Wow, okay, I'm stumped. <laughs> Kenneth no, Nicholson. it's good. You know, I'm yeah. glad you're stumped because it means you're thoughtful about it. I would probably want to say that Ken Nicholson ushered in edification with, with clothing, that he mm. um, really pointed toward the future of menswear. I, yeah. you know, essentially what I'm doing is I'm laying the foundation of a house, you know, and if I do my job correctly, um, a legacy house, so this thing will stand mm. years after I'm gone. And so, like, that's yeah. something that I would want to see. I would want to be added. Um, you know, this exclusive list of, of lasting American fashion houses. That's beautiful. Legacy. Legacy. I think legacy, edification, and liberation, as you said earlier. Yeah. Like, I think th those are the things that I see and I feel um, when I wear Kenneth Nicholson. And thank you so much, bro. I, I really appreciate you. I appreciate your work. I appreciate your time. Seeing you now, you know, um, online, you know, since we're, we're in the COVID times, it's still great to see you, see your spirit and, and hear how honest you are about your evolution as a person 
and as an artist and as a designer. Um, and so I was truly honored and jumped for joy when I was even considered to, to do this interview, man. Like, I, I really appreciate it. When I get to L.A., and we'll sit down together and let's chop it up um, for sure. Uh, and maybe I'll be, do the music idea I have. Uh, so thank you, brother. Yeah. Thank you so and much. Thank you. thank you, brother. And thanks, everybody, for uh, tuning in. Don't forget to find out who this year's winner, <laughs> Kenneth Nicholson, will be for the Digital CFDA Awards on Monday, September 14th. Um, thank you again, brother. And thanks, everybody. Let's watch it.